Hello everyone. We were asked to create a video about triangular arbitrage and how to use it in the Sharp Trader program. So we will go over this now. So to add a strategy, click Add Strategy and choose the one you want to add. For our video, since we are showing triangular arbitrage, I'll click on triangle and select single session. Um, single session means you're trading on one account. And I'll explain more about this later, but for now, I'm not gonna select it. I'll just click okay and we'll see a strategy window. So when I open the settings, I see three sessions, uh, and this is because I didn't choose the single session. So single session works best when your broker has multiple liquidity options. However, if there is one liquidity options and you're trading uh, Euro GBP in terms of Euro USD and GBP USD, by comparing GBP and Euro USD and Euro GBP, you're not gonna see a difference in quotes. Uh, because the broker will correct the prices. So you either need to select different liquidity options or use uh, multiple brokers for the strategy to work. So the broker here will just correct the, the prices by himself and the strategy won't work. But I'm not going to go into too much detail with multiple sessions since we're only focusing on setting up the program, not necessarily showing how it trades. In your case, you're likely to choose two to three different brokers and use those. So you can uh, set the start and stop times for trading. And um, if you don't adjust these parameters, the program will trade 24 hours a day, five days a week. Uh, so if you want to trade only during certain times, uh, this time is inputted based on your VPS time, then you'll need to set the time to start and time to stop uh, for your trades. And if you want this time to be used uh, to close orders, you can select apply to close. And if you don't want the orders to close during these times, only to open between them, you don't check this box. So if you don't check this box, the orders will open, but will close at any time. The check news filter option allows you to decide whether the program should trade based on news events or not. And you can enable the filter and then decide whether to trade uh, uh, during news events or to avoid trading then. And I recommend avoiding it because the differences in liquidity are not usually due to news, but due to discrepancies in equipment. And seeing this, the broker might consider the this latency arbitrage and will label your trades as toxic. Uh, not trading based on news can eliminate orders uh, caused by high volatility or equipment differences. So it does the opposite and uh, avoids the broker from labeling your strategy latency and as toxic. So once again, um, you can enable the uh, enable the filter and then choose when whether to trade during news events or to avoid them. We also have a minimum minimum order lifetime setting, and this defines how long um, in seconds an order will remain open before the program seeks an arbitrage situation. Maximum order lifetime is how long an order can stay open before it is closed. And trading pauses are the breaks between orders. Some brokers have minimum order lifetime requirements, so you'll need to adjust these settings to ensure that the orders uh, don't appear one after the other and uh, alert the broker that there might be toxic strategies. And this goes for the same thing. You should put a trading pause between the orders. We also have an emulator mode, and the emulator mode lets you see how the trade, how trading strategy would work without actually sending the orders to brokers. So it uses broker quotes, uh, like real life quotes, but doesn't account for the slippage or order execution times. 
It's however a useful for identifying errors in your settings. And I highly recommend using emulator mode to fine tune your settings. And if you can't, fine tune your settings or something's not working, you can contact our support for help. We'd be happy to help. So I highly recommend first setting up the program and then testing it using emulator mode, especially for the first couple of runs. We also have max deals and max deals refers to the number of open orders for a single instrument. You can set the maximum number of open orders across all instruments um, and determine the number of errors allowed before uh, the program stops uh, opening orders. And this helps you protect you from potential losses due to either configuration errors or internet issues or any sort of thing like that. Moving on, um, in the currency list, you'll find all the currencies used to create your synthetic cross-based rings. The programs will take pairs that are in the currency list and build all the possible rings. So we will go into this further. Uh, the symbol format here is very crucial as well. And we will discuss how the symbol format impacts this. If your quotes start with capital letters, um, for example, Euro USD or GVP USD, where the first letter is uh, capital, you can leave them as is set up right here. Um, and if your quotes don't have slashes, you can use BQ without a slash. Um, and essentially this way you are mapping the symbols to uh, how your quotes are appearing. Um, and this is crucial because to identify them, there needs to be um, a certain format that you pick. In our case, we will have BQ without a slash, but followed by a lowercase p. And I'll specify this for all the sessions. And under here, you see uh, if your broker allows comments, you can add them as well. This is not a very important setting. You also have uh, mappings. So mappings for session one, two, and three. And this is created for non-standard symbols. As we've explained in other videos, you can map symbols like Euro USD to a custom value if it's not included in our preset mappings. And this is often used for indices. Um, and how you do this, uh, as we've explained before, on the left, you enter the index name as it appears in our fast feed, and on the right, how it will appear for the broker. So this will make your mapping successful. Automatically close all locks. This setting is useful when you don't want to leave open positions for the triple swap on Wednesday. And this is more often when it's used. You can set a specific time, for example, half an hour to an hour before the triple swap occurs and use the force close settings uh, as well to close all orders at the end of the day. So force close works very similarly. Um, you can close, force close all the orders at either the end of the day or when they're profitable. And you can also set a time range to force, force close uh, these orders. Um, and this is done in order to avoid sending all your orders to the broker at once. The program will close them gradually based on the times that you've set. So it's from, from this time until the end time that is when the program will be forced closing the orders. And the profitable, um, I'll explain a bit here. Um, if you go to the instruments and orders section, there's a min profit column. When you set a minimum profit, orders will only be considered profitable if they meet or exceed this value. Similarly, when you go to automatically close all locks, the program will only consider orders for closure if they meet the minimum profit threshold. You can also, in this page, set the minimum and maximum lot sizes. Um, and for fixed API uh, users, there's a lot multiplier option. And you do this based on what your broker's minimum lot is, um, and you can set this here. 
Okay, so now we can go back to the instruments and orders once everything is set and we will go over some more settings. You can click apply changes, move on to instruments and orders and you see a uh, build rings button. So this program will create all the possible rings based on the currencies that you've listed. If you've connected to a broker and added a currency list, clicking this button will generate a table as well. And uh, it's important here that you don't choose all of the currencies as it will put pressure on the program and make your strategy work worse. Um, if you're connected to a broker and you have added a currency list, this button will generate a table and some instruments will be disabled initially so the program doesn't send orders right away. You can then configure the settings for each of the rings. You could have lock, uh, max spread for one, two, and three spreads, min profit, which as before determines when orders will, clo uh, will close. If the minimum profit's not reached, the order won't close. Max profit is basically the take profit at which the orders will close. Um, and it works very similarly to the take profit parameters in previous programs. And deviation to close and deviation to open. Um, these refer to when orders will open or close based on the percentage difference between the actual and synthetic quotes. So I will go into this more as well. Regarding max profit, it also relates to deviation to close and deviation to open. So we'll use a pair to explain the deviations to you. Um, we'll compare uh, Australian dollar to yen to the synthetic quote of a, uh, Australian dollar to USD and USD to yen. If the difference exceeds 0.005%, we'll open the order. And this deviation works very similarly when closing orders. If the minimum profit is reached and deviation exceeds the set value, the order will close. So it's basically the deviation from the symbols to the synthetic quote, and it works in both ways to open and to close. You also see current spread, and current spread shows the size of the current spreads uh, used for statistical purposes. You can't input anything here, but you can use this data to analyze and adjust your uh, settings, especially uh, works well in emulator mode. Uh, the deviations here as well, you can take a look at them for your analysis and uh, look in the emulator mode when, uh, look at these settings when you're running emulator mode to analyze and make changes on your settings based on the results. So I hope this was useful and that we covered all of the settings. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And thanks so much for watching. Um, and if you'd like us to keep making videos, please like, subscribe, and comment with any questions. And we'll continue creating more informative videos for you detailing the software. Thank you so much.